Modern survival gear promises waterproofing, lightweight and durability, yet anyone who has spent time in prolonged rain, wind or cold knows the weaknesses of plastic tarps and synthetic shells. They tear without warning, trap condensation and become brittle under ultraviolet exposure. During World War II, Failure of shelter and clothing was not an inconvenience, but a death sentence. Pilots ditched in freezing seas, infantry endured weeks of rain without resupply, and reconnaissance units lived exposed for months. In response, military engineers developed a fabric system so effective that it quietly outlived the war and still outperforms much of what is sold today. This guide examines that fabric, why it works, and how its principles can be applied now by anyone serious about long-term survival and historical field craft. This section explains the wartime problem that forced innovation. By the early 1940s, Allied forces faced a contradiction. Rubberized fabrics were waterproof but cracked delaminated and trapped sweat. Untreated cotton breathed well but soaked through quickly and became dangerously heavy. The Royal Air Force encountered the worst consequences when pilots downed over cold water died from exposure even when rescue was near. The solution required a fabric that resisted water without sealing it out completely, retained strength when wet, and could survive harsh use without complex maintenance. The result was not plastic, but a radical rethinking of natural fibres. Now, this section, well, it reveals the fabric secret itself. The breakthrough was tightly woven, long staple cotton treated with controlled impregnation rather than just a surface coating. In Britain, this led to the creation of ventile cloth, which was, you know, originally developed for immersion suits. The cotton fibres were spun and woven so densely that when exposed to water pressure, they would swell shut, effectively blocking any further penetration. Instead of relying on a film, the fabric itself became the barrier which is quite clever, actually. Variations of this idea also turned up in wax canvas and oilcloth, used for things like tents, packs and vehicle covers. These fabrics shed rain, resisted wind and, importantly, remained breathable under normal use. They didn't fail catastrophically if punctured, and they could be repaired right there in the field. So, this section explains why this fabric, you know, really beats modern tarps. Plastic tarps are waterproof because they're impermeable. But that same feature causes condensation to form underneath, soaking clothing and bedding from the inside. World War II fabric systems managed moisture dynamically. Light rain beaded and ran off. When the rain got heavier, the fibres would swell and seal. Body heat actually drove vapour outward, helping keep things a bit drier inside. Even when fully saturated, the fabric held onto its structural integrity and dried out without cracking. Waxed canvas added another advantage, which was abrasion resistance. Dragged across rock, branches or even metal, it would wear down gradually instead of just tearing open. For long-term shelter, this kind of durability really mattered more than any weight savings. This section explores how soldiers and field units applied the fabric in practice. World War II ground forces used treated canvas for tents, bivouac covers, and pack liners. Air crews relied on ventile garments that could keep them alive for hours in cold water. 
Vehicle crews covered engines and supplies with wax fabric that resisted rain and oil at the same time. Maintenance was simple, really. When water resistance declined, wax or oil was reapplied with heat and friction. No specialized chemicals were needed. A field unit could maintain its own gear indefinitely, which is a principle modern survivalists often overlook. Right, so this section provides practical steps to apply this knowledge today. A modern survival shelter can be built using heavy cotton canvas treated with a paraffin and natural oil blend. You begin by stretching the fabric taut. Then warm the wax mixture until it's liquid and brush it evenly into the fibers, focusing especially on the seams and stress points. Apply heat with sunlight or controlled warmth to help penetration. And, well, allow it to cure fully before use. The result is a shelter that sheds rain, breathes under normal conditions, and withstands years of abrasion. For clothing, tightly woven cotton garments treated lightly maintain flexibility while gaining wind and rain resistance. Repairs require only needle thread and additional wax. This section explains the long-term advantages in real-world survival scenarios. In prolonged wet conditions, condensation kills comfort and morale faster than rain itself. World War II fabric systems excelled because they managed internal moisture rather than pretending it did not exist. They also resisted ultraviolet degradation far better than plastics. You know, a waxed canvas shelter that's been stored for decades can still function just fine after a bit of retreatment, while most modern tarps, well, they tend to degrade invisibly until the moment they fail. For static camps, expeditions, or off-grid living, this kind of reliability really matters a lot more than just pack weight. So, this part, it uh, really connects the fabric to historical continuity, not just simple nostalgia. You see, the World War II fabric secret wasn't some one-time invention. It was, in fact, built on centuries of experience with sailcloth, oilskin, and military textiles, all refined under the pressures of industrial demand. After the war, many of these fabrics were, well, abandoned. Not because they didn't work, but simply because plastics turned out to be cheaper and didn't need as much skilled labour. Now, rediscovering these materials, it reconnects survival practice with tried and tested historical systems, instead of just following the latest marketing cycles. As we wrap up, it's important to reinforce why this knowledge still matters today. For those who care about durability, repairability, and, you know, real-world performance, World War II fabric technology offers lessons that, honestly, a lot of modern gear tends to ignore. Waxed canvas and tightly woven cotton well, they don't promise perfection. What they do promise is reliability under tough use, the ability to be repaired in the field, and predictable behaviour even in harsh weather. If this guide has in any way added lasting value to your understanding of historical survival technology, please consider subscribing to the channel, share this episode with other history and survival enthusiasts, and help us keep alive knowledge that frankly still works when modern gear lets us down.